for Sexual Abuse Prevention was formally organized a year ago, a year and a half ago, <coughs> primarily by myself and my wife. And we would like to expand it and grow it to other people now. Um, so this is actually our second international workshop. There are a couple of people here from Canada at least. Um, last year somebody actually came from the United Kingdom. So what we do is pretty much worldwide. It's international. Well, for some reason they seem to be more than honest to me because a lot of them have admitted things that they have done. Men and women. So don't think this is just a man thing. Women, women who are teachers have told me that they have touched children. So I don't report it. Some mental health professionals think that I'm horrible for doing that. My attitude is I would rather help somebody who's struggling than say, hey, I'm going to throw you in jail as soon as you tell me anything. So a guy called me about a year ago. He said, I, look, I'm not a pedophile. I'm not attracted to children. But I got custody of my six-year-old daughter this year, earlier this year, because her mother was into drugs and whatever. And he says, you know, I just, I don't want to be doing this. But he had begun touching her. They had little interaction. And in describing this to some mental health professionals, I said, look, he had just, just touched her. Like, you know, what I would perceive to be mutual masturbation. He touches me, she touches him. And she kind of liked a little bit and asked for it. All of some professionals who thought I was horrible. But I helped him by identifying, first of all, his vulnerable moment was when she came out of the shower. I didn't tell him, hey, you got to get rid of your daughter. Go turn yourself into the police. We talked about that. I said, you could do that. But I said, um, you know, when is the vul when, it, when are you most vulnerable? And so it was when she came out of the shower in the evening. And of his own accord, he chose to have her shower in the morning so that she'd be off to school. And he wouldn't have that sensitive time. Then he, of his own accord, I've never told anybody to come out. I talk about it if they want to. I encourage them, but I don't demand that people come out to somebody. But he was living with another man, a male roommate, and he came out. He chose of his own accord to come out to his roommate. And the roommate said, yeah, I figure so. And said, you know, I'll help you with this. So he had kind of a prevention partner there to support him. And he also identified three females that he could let his little girl go stay with if he felt like her vulnerable. Oh, people tell me, oh, you don't know if he didn't, if he stopped or not. But well, I think he stopped. And I say, my attitude is, yes, I think that penetrating is, to me, the worst, especially ongoing penetration. I would rather say, hey, stop while you're at the just touching stage than have him go on. Some people say, well, you failed. How do you know he didn't do it again? I don't know that for sure, but I believe that he's done. Thank you very much. I we have such a, such a good team here. All right, let's move on. Were you sexually abused as a child? Some of you are going to share your story. So a few years ago, I was in counseling, and this was in the 80s. In the 80s, they were really driving home this sexual abuse thing, and a counselor told me, Ah, you were sexually abused by your mother. So I called my mother up and she says, no, I, I said, I don't remember anything like that happening. <laughs> so I go back to the psychologist and she says, you're both in denial. I don't know. I don't think it happened. So 71% say no. Uh, and for, so it has numbers down below. You, no, it doesn't have numbers. It, that's the number of the thing, but somewhere I could change it and tell how many of the 14 responses were the 7% represent. But anyway, um, so most of us believe, are confident that we were not sexually abused. Now here's a sensitive question. Have you ever been sexually attracted to a child? I'll give you about five minutes to think about that because I know some of you are not sure. No, our time is up. 
All right, 69%. And now, now here I wish I knew how to flip real quickly to the numbers. No, I don't. I don't want to do that. You can just guess. But don't try to guess who the people are in this room who are admit that they are sexually attracted to children unless they choose to come out. And so please be respectful. Um, if you must throw rotten tomatoes, throw them at me. Because this, you know, you, you've been on the internet, right? Where anytime the subject of pedophilia comes up, Facebook, kill them! So have you had sexual contact with a child? Now, you know, I'm not going to go ask anybody. Certainly I'm not going to confront them, but this is an opportunity just to admit it without having anybody know what your answer is. So let's give 10 seconds to figure that out. Maybe you're not sure. So 82% say no. I guess everybody's sure one way or the other. Um, so there are a few in this room, and I will tell you right now that some of them will admit that to you today before the day is over. What is the best response to non-offending pedophiles? So this is just for fun of it again. Just to see if anybody has Rotten Tomatoes written in them. Oh, phew, I am so relieved. Because <laughs> I was going to leave if it was one. <laughs> okay. So who cares about people with pedophilia? People say, oh, you know, the children are important. As if helping pedophiles is you have to choose one or the other. Well, why not both? Why not help pedophiles who are at risk, possibly, of sexually interacting with a child to not abuse? So there's ASAP, ASEC, ACCESS, Before You Act, PPD, Now, Stop, So, Verpad. Let's go through each of those. ASEP, we are the Association for Sexual Abuse Prevention. Say, well, why didn't you start another organization? Uh, there were <clears throat> one or two others that I would have been glad to do this in. ASCA is the primary one. But anyway, they're working in that direction. We work with them, but we eventually decided that we needed something unique. And now I'm discovering that that's not unique. Some of you have already been doing it probably for years and years. But anyway, that's our website, ASAP. It's already taken, so we added the word international to suggest that we're around the world. The people that contact me, they're from Israel, Iran, Kazakhstan, mostly from America. We don't do the treatment ourselves, but any of you that are therapists, I want to put you on a list. Now, therapists suffer from corollary stigma, this horrible stigma against pedophiles, but you therapists know that you can get it too, the rotten tomatoes. Um, so, but if you're willing to have your name on the list at ASAP International, the last page is getting help. So we list in public. The, that's the people they don't do that, but I have access to their list, so I sneak on their list and get a referral from them. ASEC was a new one, one that I didn't know about, but we met, Jennifer Weeks did a presentation with us out in Philadelphia last spring, and I think they have a lot of potential. They're not international, they're just America in America, the American Association, but they do similar. They're a, th a professional organization, therapists belong to that, and all the ones I've talked to get it. Therapists don't all get it. Some of them think that it's impossible, it's inevitable that every pedophile is going to offend. Um, yeah. So ATS is right here in Beaverton, the Association for the Treatment of Sexual Abusers. Um, I don't think this is too sensitive a question. You don't have to raise your hand, but how many are members of ATSA? So there are several of us here. All right, you can talk to these folks. Um, it's a good organization. They're moving toward primary prevention. The last president, Elizabeth Le Tourneau, is a friend of mine. She's doing something at Johns Hopkins University, especially for young people. Excellent program. She was here at Portland State, I think, last week. Somebody told me. One of you told me. Um, next. next week? Well, then you can go to hear her, too. Um, and the current president, Michael, M Michael Miner, is it? Um, he's also very into prevention. I like him. Um, Before You Act was one of the first support groups for people that didn't want to offend. The challenge is that they choose 
not to take a stand about the rightness or the wrongness of interaction, sexual interaction with a child. I didn't like that. Some other people didn't like that, so they started another organization that we'll get to in a minute. But Michael, actually, we met at Before You Act. And at first, somebody told me, somebody from ATSA told me, don't have anything to do with Before You Act. How come you have them on your website? Well, as we worked, at, we went to their conference last year and the year before. They're doing basically the same thing we are, getting mental health professionals and minor attractive people together. They're a little different approach than we are, but we're not that different. And at the last time we were out there, I said, you know, Richard, maybe we can work together. He said, yeah, you guys talk too much about abuse. So, you know, we kind of come from the let's protect children from abuse perspective. They're not quite there yet. So anyway, that's before you act. <clears throat> Prevention Project Dunkelfeld is the premier program for treating what they call the dark field. Dunkelfeld means the dark field. The light field would be those that are, have come to the attention of the criminal justice system. They know about them. The dark field, they don't know about them. So these are people that come forward. People say, oh, nobody would come forward. But they have a project that is growing by leaps and bounds. They keep adding new satellite state places in Germany. But it's just Germany. It's done in German. They speak German. They allow people from other countries. But I guess you've got to speak German. So at first, they heard about us. You know, I spent $1 a month on a website, $12 a year at iPage. And that's about the limit of my retirement income. But they somehow heard about us. And they wrote to me and said, don't use our motto, which goes something like, um, don't you're not responsible for your attractions, but you're accountable for your behavior. I thought that was a good motto. But anyway, they didn't want us to make people think we were them. But then one of their graduates is a good friend of mine now. And he mediated. And eventually, they told us we could give, share their manual with you. So that's what this program is based on today. If you're a therapist, you should have received uh, with an email and attachment that is their long manual. We'll talk about, we'll do the short version today. We'll just kind of summarize it. Um, so anyway, that's sometimes called Prevention Project Dunkelfeld, but their manual is called the Bedit Manual. So not to confuse those two, the Bedit Berlin Disexuality Therapy Manual. I actually met Klaus Spear at one of the ATSA conferences and told him what we wanted to do. He said, well, you've got to have a hospital, but Frankly, this is the first hospital that even let me in the door. The local Portland Adventist Hospital thought it was too risky to actually have pedophiles in the same building with children. Hey, they're there already. You just don't know it. So what if some come that you actually know about? So anyway, Stop It Now is a little different in America as it is. I mean, it's a separate organization in England. I met some of the guys from England, and I was quite impressed with them. Um, what can I say? They're a good organization. They're into primary prevention. But it's like when you call them, they say, well, what have you done? Or what are you going to do? You know, we've got to protect the kids from what you're going to do. Um, Jenny Coleman, who's now the CEO, very good woman. And I've talked to her and tried to encourage her a little more to get with the program. But anyway. Just to be direct about it, most people with pedophilia are a little uncomfortable contacting them. So they have some good information. If you're looking on the web for some things you shouldn't be looking at, they have a system now that brings up a pop-up that says, uh, you know, don't go here. I don't know. It's not, it's not part of the criminal justice system, but it's just a little warning. Don't look at these pictures. So a good organization. They care. Probably the one that I, I like the best, uh, Julia Grayson over in England, about the same time we started, started an organization called Stop So, Stop Sexual Offending. It actually stands for Specialist Treatment Organization for the Prevention of Sexual Offending. And when I talk to her, it's like I'm talking to myself. Um, you know, everything she thinks we pretty much think. But again, some of the people with pedophilia have a little hard time stop sexual offending. You're emphasizing too much. I mean, pedophiles are people. It's not like they're just in uncontrollable rapists. So Burped is an online support group that spun off from Before You Act. 
And if we're live streaming today, I hope that some of the folks from Burped and some from Before You Act are on board with us, listening in. Anyway, they are, they take a strong stand against any sexual act interaction with a child. So that's the upfront thing, to belong to it. Okay, maybe you did it in the past. Maybe you're a sex offender, a convicted sex offender. But you have to be committed to not ever do it again. Don't hurt, harm a child. So I appreciate that. It's my conviction that that's why it is growing the fastest. Before you act, they'll have one or two. Some days there's no comments. Burped every day, you know, hundreds of comments. People joining all the time now has over 1,800 members. So it's a support group. Ethan and Nick are the gentlemen who use a pseudonym. That's not their real names because they are somebody important in their society, in their culture. They're, they're not ready to come out, one of them even to his wife. So they go by a pseudonym. So it's kind of nebulous. You know, where is this organization? Well, it's all online. Um, there are mental health professionals that can join there as well just kind of sit in. I don't see any of the mental health professionals providing support on Verped. I wish that some of you would take some time to do that. I do that, and I'm not magic, but for whatever reason, they have come to respect me. So when somebody new joins and having trouble, well, talk to Gary or get a referral from Gary. So I have referred dozens of people. I don't keep track of anything because I don't want somebody coming in and snooping around what I'm doing and saying, okay, let's get a list of all these guys and round them up. Maybe they haven't done anything, but you're going to go harass them, take the kids away from them, whatever. So that is virtuous pedophiles. Um, just real quickly, I know I'm out of, out of my time and I promised I wouldn't take more than half an hour, but the big book, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, this is up for sale. Anybody want to, we're going to auction it off. The starting bid is $35,000. <laughs> because um, this lasted for six months. In here it says that pedophilia is a sexual orientation. Okay, it's a disorder if you are distressed by it or you act on it, but otherwise it's just a sexual orientation like any other sexual orientation. And that's the stand that we take. Um, they changed the online um, which is a whole nother story, but I might get into that later. But anyway, two days they had it changed online, just like that, to sexual interest, not sexual orientation. So that's a book that I'd recommend. How come I'm... Um, the Stop Child Molestation book. Now, Gene Abel is what I think of as kind of the grandfather of this subject. Maybe you ask the folks like him, maybe you don't. Maybe you pedophiles like him, maybe you don't. Um, because some of his research was done 30 years, 40 years ago. He's got a big white afro and looks kind of like Einstein, Albert Einstein. And to me, he's just a grandfatherly figure. I love him. Uh, I talk to him at ATSA conferences and chat. And again, he knows what we're doing. And he says, you know, you better be ready for the rotten tomatoes. And he knew that we would get harassed for trying to help pedophiles not act on it. I mean, it doesn't make sense to me. Why, why not build a a fence at the top of the cliff instead of trying to build a hospital at the bottom after they already get abused. So his book, Stop Child Molestation, he has some ideas about like the origin, the etiology of pedophilia um, that I think has some value, but some people don't. Um, so the next book is Tiger Tiger by Margot Fragoso. I don't know why it's doing that, but let's get the date. Margot actually was sexually abused from the time she was seven, and then her per the perpetrator committed suicide when she was 22. This is a unique book about sexual abuse, so if you haven't read it, I'd recommend this one. Um, we get later into Before You Act. They, Richard says that they don't want to recommend this book because it emphasizes too much that, you know, this guy needed to stop abusing this girl or whatever. Anyway. I recommend it. And she was going to come, but she has some health issues and didn't make it. So we have somebody that will very adequately take her place. The Mind of a Molester. This is the guy we met actually at that Before You Act conference. Uh, this is not his real name, but we met him. Very nice gentleman. And we just read his book. Thought it was great. Again, it comes from the perspective of somebody who has abused and what they learned from it and I think can be helpful 
to people who haven't abused to prevent them from abusing. So whenever you get into this subject, for some reason I didn't show up Sarah Good's book. Anyway. Understanding and addressing adult sexual attraction to children is studying pedophiles in contemporary society. Most of this was done with the Before You Act members, and at first they were excited. Um, frankly, some of them were disappointed. I don't know why, because I love the book. I appreciate it very much. So there is a list. I printed out a list of the resources, so you should have that on your resource list.